Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Elam Jr. here at Deuteronomy Christian Center. We're so honored and so blessed that you're tuning in this morning. Something good is about to happen to you. What I've been talking about is releasing the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. Dunamis means miracle working power. It is, it's like dynamite. It will change and rearrange things in your life. The power of God is able to bring you out of anything, any situation that you face. But the power is released through the gospel. The good news, the nearly too good to be true news. So today, we're going to release this good news so you can apply it to your life. And I'm telling you, grace is Jesus. And once Jesus comes in your life, he wants to help you more than you want to be helped. Watch this, and I know it will bless you. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. We've been talking about releasing the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. Releasing the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. The power of dunamis. Scripture says in 3.20, it says, Now to him that is able to do exceeding, Abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us The Amplified Bible says now to him by consequence of his actions of his power That is at work within us is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly Far over and above all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers beyond our highest desires beyond our highest thoughts, beyond our highest hopes, and beyond our highest dreams. Say amen to that. Amen. That's so very vital. This is what this power, this word power there in the Greek means dunamis, dunamis power. With this dunamis power, he's able to do more than you can ask or think. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. This dunamis power is miracle working power. It is dynamic power. It is the ability to cause effect and a change. It is the ability to get results in your life. We're sitting here with the dunamis power on the inside of us as a believer. How many are glad that no matter what you go through, you got the power? <laughs> amen. Amen. And so that's so very, imp very vital, important. I love that. Um, some of the synonyms. Um, names for, for this power is inherit power. In other words, that means um, independent of any other power and is residing in you always. So this dunamis power is always in us. It always can remove the burden. It always can destroy the yoke. It always can, can get you results no matter what you face in life. Thank God for the power. Amen. I love it here. Also, this power it's also translated excellency of soul. Dunamis means excellency of soul. What is that? The power over strongholds built in the mind. So this power is able to deliver you from any stronghold that's built in your mind. Lord have mercy. Look at somebody say, my mind is renewing today. My mind is. Amen. And so this is, this is the power that we have. Amen. And the Lord told me to release this power. But what we found out is that the power can't be released all the time. It's because we don't understand the gospel. The gospel of grace, the gospel, the good news is what releases the power in the earth, in your life, in every church. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, God wants us to break down this so we can understand how to receive, not just shout about it, but how to receive. Somebody say, I'm ready to receive. Say that. Okay, well, how is this power released? Look at Romans, Romans 1, Romans 1, whew. 
I mean, how many ever had a Bible so long the Bible started turning up, just falling to pieces? <laughs> I got one, I got Hebrews and John and everything, you know. But I ain't getting rid of this Bible. This Bible is annoying. I don't care. So y'all see pages, y'all, y'all just pray for them. I ain't getting no another Bible. I, I'm trying to keep this Bible together. What's going on with this Bible? But um, Romans 1, 16, look at this. Uh, this is so very vital. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What this is telling us now, how to release the power. It tells us that the gospel of Christ, it is the power of God. You know, Galatians 1, 6 says that the gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ. So in other words, when I see the gospel of Christ, I'm talking about grace. Paul came to preach grace to the Gentiles. Amen. So right here is telling us that the, the gospel of Christ or the gospel of, of grace or this gospel, it is the power of God. It is dunamis. When you preach it and when you release the gospel, power shows up unto salvation. This word salvation means sozo. In other words, in the Greek, which means not just only born again, but salvation means forgiveness and healing and deliverance and soundness and safety and preservation and protection and prosperity and wholeness, all of the finished works of Jesus. So in other words, if I read this right, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, this gospel of grace. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation, unto born again, unto healing, unto forgiveness, unto soundness unto protection, unto wholeness. I don't know who need to be protected, who need to be whole. I don't know who need to be sound. I don't know who need to be healed, but I'm telling you today, you came in one way, but you're getting ready to go out another way because I'm about to preach the gospel, and when the gospel is preached, that's when power shows up. No wonder gospel of grace is attacked all over the world. No wonder people don't understand it. And they'll say, sloppy grace. You heard that? Sloppy grace. Oh, they're talking about sloppy grace. You know, it ain't about, I heard uh, a preacher say the other day, oh, sloppy grace. That means, grace means you live in a type of way. I, that ain't what I'm preaching. Oh, that, that's not grace, living in a type of way. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying you got to understand that grace is Jesus. You can't talk about grace without grace. You wouldn't be here today. You're not living under the law. You're living under the grace. Thank God I'm not under the law because if you was under the law, you had to be perfect. And if you were not perfect, you had to kill an animal and the blood of that animal will keep your sins to the next year. You can't even have a relationship with God unless you go through the priest all because you was under the law. But Jesus came now and under grace, my God, after the cross, it will save by grace. It is his unmerited faith the reason why we're here tonight, today. Amen. And so I'm telling you right now, I don't care who talk about this. I understand. You don't understand this if you can't look through it the lens of grace. If you're looking through your lens of the law, then you can't see what I'm talking about today. So I'm trying to tell you what I'm saying. I'm telling you the gospel is what's going to release this power. And I'm telling you, the gospel of Christ. Man, I love this. I love it, man. I love it here because it says here, therein is the righteousness of God revealed. And uh, from faith to faith. In other words, he's telling you now that he said this is for the Jew first and the Greek. What do you mean? The Jew first, see, the, everything, see, Jews is God, God's chosen people. He came to the Jew first. So the Jews now, they was under the law. So he's telling him now, now I'm about to say, God, Jesus came to fulfill the law. So some things you, you have to understand how to rightly divide it now because he's telling the Jews, you don't need to do everything you used to do anymore because now I'm going to show you a better way on a new covenant. So I'm coming to you as a Jew to tell you, and I'm coming to you as a Greek. Greek means Gentile. That's everybody uh, other than a Jew, everybody but a Jew. In other words, everybody in here today, if you're not a Jew, I'm talking to you, Gentile. So he came to give us understanding before the law and after the law. In other words, there are some things that happen to us and that we believe and act on before the law that it don't, 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 
it don't mean come over here in the new covenant. Amen? If you riding around in your new car today with an eight track in there, listen to Superfly, you know what you're doing? You, that, the eight tracks have been obsolete. There's no use. You can't ride around with no, no eight track or no cassette tape. You get laughed at. And that's what we do in the gospel. Taking the old covenant and mixing it with the new and don't know that there's a difference now and yet you look silly to still say I'm under the law. Because under the law, it says if you offend somebody, cut your hand off. Why you ain't cut your hand off? Because everything is not applicable to the day. You have to rightly divide the word. So here's what the Lord told me to do. I'm coming on in. My God. I mean, not in, but I'm coming on. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, show the difference between before the law and after the law so we can get this gospel so the power can show up. As soon as you understand it, it's, it's easy to receive what God has for you. Say amen to that. So let's, let's do righteousness. Let, let's do righteousness before the law and now righteousness after the law. Righteousness before Jesus died and now righteousness after Jesus died. There is a difference. And if you don't know that, then you, you're going to put everything together and then you're going to be in bondage. You're not going to be able to receive because you, you're not in the right dispensation. Dispensations is just the house rules of that day. The grace dispensation and the law dispensation. So you got to understand that. You got to put that together. You got to understand that. You just can't read the Bible like a big Bible. You're reading this, put everything together. No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. So let's go before the law. Am I talking to anybody? Yes. Isaiah 64. We're not going to be long, but we're going to break this down because, you know, I, I found out that there's, there's a lot of ignorance in, in, in the body. Yes, sir. Uh, and the ignorance means not knowing. And because we haven't broken down, we shout and falling out, running around and messing up carpets, and they don't even know what the Bible is talking about. We're in the, we got to understand this for you can be able to receive under the covenant that you're in, and you don't let nobody put you in condemnation because Jesus now he has moved from behind the veil and moved into your heart. And I'm telling you right now, but look what it says here, righteousness. Look at the righteousness before the law. Look what it says here in um, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Do you have it? Let's read that out loud. Isaiah 64, and this is before the law. This is, this is, why, this is before, the, before, the, before the law. But we all, but we are all as what? As unclean and all our righteousness is all as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Our righteousness is as a filter rag. In other words, uh, before the law is self-righteousness. Our righteousness is as a filter rag. The Amplified Bible says uh, like this, that all of our righteousness, our best deeds of rightness and justice is like filter rags or a polluted garment. In other words, our righteousness, you trying to do some of your good deeds, I'm trying to do something to get God to love me. I'm trying to fast to get God to love me. I'm trying to come to church to get God to love me. I'm trying to do all the Ten Commandments. I'm trying to do all the 613 laws. When I do that, then I'm right. Well, that's self-righteousness. That was before the law, and nobody could ever keep it. That's why they had to kill an animal. And the blood of that animal would cover them because Jesus' blood hadn't came yet. Right. I'm not talking to anybody. And so before the law, it was self-righteousness. That's why it makes no sense today. You trying to be right with God by what you do. You trying to live good enough to be right with God. I don't care if you live good enough for, the, uh, for nine, 988 days. But the next day, you're going to miss it because nobody has ever kept all of the law without missing it. That's why Jesus is so important. Praise God. In other words, so righteousness. Man, so Israel, they understood that. They, there was their humble confession of Judah's sin. You know, as they, they were just, um, we, have, we have all become like one who is unclean because they knew they couldn't do it. Somebody said before the law. Okay, then let's go to after the law. Glory to God. Let's go to after the law. Amen. Glory to God. I got so many, I don't know what to say. Look at Romans 3.20. Romans 3 and 20. After the law. 
No, 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 no. I'm, I got a better one for you. Look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Somebody said after the cross. This is after the cross means after Jesus died and rose up, right? That we are under a different dispensation as believers. So we need to understand that because the enemy wanted to keep us before the law. He wanted to keep us trying to do everything to please God. Trying to pray five hours to please God. Trying to give to please God. You know what I'm telling you right here? Look at here in verse um, Galatians 2 and verse 21. It says, I do not, here's Paul wrote this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Look at the Amplified Bible. It says, therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something more minor importance and defeat its very purpose. For I do not set aside and invalidate and frustrate and nullify the grace, the unmerited favor of God. For if justification, righteousness, acquittal from guilt comes through observing the rituals of the law, then Christ the Messiah died groundlessly and to no purpose and in, and in vain. So in other words, a man, Jesus said, wait a minute, I'm, I, I, I got a different righteousness. I'm not, I, I, I got God's righteousness now. I'm going to show you, we're not, we're not under that law. So if somebody tells you, you know, you're not righteous, you need to say, wait a minute, I know I'm not in, before the law, but after the law, I am righteous. I'm going to show you, he made me this way. I am righteous, not because I did everything right now. I'm righteous because of what Jesus said. God, I'm not talking to anybody up in here. Yeah. And look at Romans. I'm, 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 um, give me one more scripture on that. Amen, because some people looking like, you know, a uh, little funny, like, but I'm going to give you your scriptures, amen. I'm going to cut your head open and pour this in you so you won't be able to do nothing but believe it, amen. Look what it says here. I love it, Romans 3. Look at Romans 3 and 20. Look, it tells us here, therefore by the deeds of the law, by the actions of the law, there shall no flesh be justified or declared righteous in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But, verse 21, now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed uh, by the law and the prophets. How? Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified of the clerk righteous freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Say amen to that. So now I'm righteous because I believe on Jesus. I'm righteous because I have faith in Jesus. The moment you say I believe on Jesus, he makes you righteous. Right standing with God. Able to stand before God without any sin, conscience, or guilt and get your prayers answered. So you sit up in here all condemned and all guilty and all worried about what you did the other day, last week, last year, and the devil is trying to pump you. Don't you let that devil pump you. You need to rise up and say, wait a minute, I am the righteousness of God. I was righteous before I sinned. I was righteous before I missed it because the moment I received Jesus, he made me righteous. I don't have to try to do anything. I'm righteous because I'm right with God. That's so very vital. That's before the law. How's the, why is that important? Because if you condemn, your faith can't work. And your power can't be released. So somebody say, I'm righteous. Okay, let's go to another one. Praise God. Let's go to being blessed by God. How do you be blessed by God before the law? And how do you be, I mean, before the, before the cross? and be blessed by God after the cross. In this dispensation, how are you blessed? Are we blessed like they, they were before the law, under the, under the law? Or are we blessed after the law through grace? Are we blessed through the law? Or are we blessed today through grace? Look what it says here in Deuteronomy 28. Somebody said, are we in school? Yeah. Church is the only place you don't want to come to learn nothing. You want to holler, follow out, and come and say you've been to church, and then you want to go to school, you go be a doctor, you sit down and find out what you do, you go be a lawyer, you sit down and find out what you got to do, and come to church. Why are he reading? <laughs> Who? I want to hoop it. Mm -hmm. I want him to hoop a little bit to keep me awoke. You should leave them pancakes alone before you came in here. 
No, no, no. I just want you to know something. I want you to see it because I want you to be able to open your mouth and pray. I want you to be able to have some confidence who you are because the power is going to get ready to remove things in your life and do something about it just by changing your mindset. So I'm not concerned about who like this, who don't like this, who want more, who don't want to sit here and listen. Listen. <laughs> Amen. How to be blessed by God before the law. Here's, here's how they did it. The Jews. Look what it says here in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It, 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 and it shall come to pass if, if, if. See, that's conditions. See, before the law was always conditions. You had to do this before that happened. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe all to do all the commandments which I have uh, commanded thee this day, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you if thou, if thou, if thou, if thou, if thou, thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you didn't, you didn't get, you was cursed, and if you did, you got blessed. Blessed means empowered to prosper. So under the, before Jesus died, they had to do everything right, and if they didn't, they didn't get blessed until they killed an animal. Everybody understand that? But today, we can't tell people, well, you do everything right, then you'll be blessed. No, no, Jesus, he, Jesus got us out of that. How many are so glad that Jesus got us out of that? Even though we got to do right, but it, that's not how we get blessed. How we get blessed this year? This, I was going to say this year, but this this place. Go to Galatians 3, uh, 13. I'm preaching up in here. Galatians 3, 13. Somebody said, give me another yes, you are. Give me a yes, yes, you are. Somebody said, yes, you are, Pastor. Yes, you are. Said, no matter how I'm looking, no matter how I'm looking, yes, you are. <laughs> Galatians what? Look at this, man. I'm telling you, before the cross, we just read. But this is after the cross. This is the dispensation of grace you're living under. Thank God. This is why we need to appreciate Jesus, what he did for us. Look at, look at in Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being a made a curse for us, it is written, Curses is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile. That's us, man. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Under the new covenant, after the cross, we are blessed because of Jesus, not blessed because of our obedience. We're blessed because we believe on Jesus, and the moment we did, we are the blessing of Abraham. We have, we have a right. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in this city. I'm blessed. How, how many know you're blessed today? You're empowered today. Not because we did everything right. We are blessed because we believe on Jesus. We're redeemed from the curse, and we are walking in the blessings because you believe on Jesus. That's why some of you, they, they came here, somebody, I just came, but I ain't really expecting none because I know how I've been living. You don't even understand what you got on you. You are blessed. I don't care what you've done. You are blessed. I don't care how many mistakes you made. You shouldn't have never believed on Jesus. Once you believe on Jesus, he comes on you and calls the blessing to come on you. While we're working out our salvation, while you're getting better by day by day, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how many mistakes you made. You got to know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, but this is not my testimony. This is not how it's going to end. I'm walking through my salvation. I'm getting better every day. But while I'm getting better, I'm not under the curse. While I'm getting better, I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. I'm blessed no matter what I did. Yeah. See, if you get that, the enemy can't talk you out because, see, we're blessed today because God put blessings on us because of Jesus, not because of obedience. Everybody say that. Everybody say amen if you understand so very vital. Give me one more priest, Pastor. Somebody, somebody say, I'm getting it. I'm getting it, Pastor. I'm getting it. What are you doing? We're renewing our mind because you'll be surprised if people don't operate in this. They're trying to do everything to be blessed. They're coming down, you know. You know, I remember when I was, I was trying to, you know, come down and get the Holy Ghost way back, you know, as a child, you know, coming on there. Did they have a little moaning bench? You remember that? The moaning bench. See, some of y'all too. Some of y'all moaning bench. Y'all, y'all. I've been in church all my life. Moaning bench. The moaning bench. <laughs> the moaning bench is when you know you ain't right, right, and you trying to get the Holy Ghost, trying to get you. You need to come down to the moaning bench and just moan a little bit. Sit on the front and moan, and maybe the mercy of God will help you. You know, but just get on the moaning bench. Man, I stayed on the moaning bench. Then nothing happened. 
Wow. Praise the Lord. Man, I tell you, receive that word today. Remember, dunamis is released through the power of the gospel. I'm telling you right now, man, that is so awesome. We want to encourage you to be doers of your word, of the word, not just hearers only. I tell you, today is the day that we're celebrating as a church, as a pastor, 20 three years of ministry. Can you imagine being in the ministry for 23 years? I started uh, with eight people in my house and went into a hotel. And today God has brought us to where we are today, only by his grace. I'm so honored. Today we're celebrating. I want to invite each of you out, you know, because I'm called to the church, my body uh, as a family, but I'm also called to the body of Christ. And those of you that are watching, I want to invite you out today for celebrating at 10 o'clock, 23 years of ministry. Listen, I have Pastor Judy Shaw. She'll be in town. She's here to minister the Word of God out of California. It's going to be blessed. You're going to be encouraged. I'm telling you right now, I would love to see you come up to me and let me know you're here. I'm telling you because God has been good and His mercy endures forever. Listen, also, I want to say this. If, if someone is watching and you don't know the Lord, you know, as your personal Savior, uh, just repeat these words. Jesus said, believing on me get you in. Um, so just repeat it. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ. Come on, say it. Son of the living God, I believe you died for me. Rose up on the third day with all power in your hands. Lord, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Do something in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you've said that with the heart, welcome to the family of God. Jesus loves you. And now you're in the body. Um, he said, when you believe on him, you believe unto righteousness. Confession is made unto salvation. That means you're righteous now. You can stand before God without any sin, conscience, or guilt. Wow, we love, we, <coughs> God is so awesome. So go ahead, let us know you did that. I know you did. So we can send you some free literature information to help you in your Christian walk. And we're gonna see you on next week. Uh, keep praying for us and we will pray for you. God bless you and see you soon.